and welcome to today's NASDAQ CEO Signature Series. I'm Jill Bennett. Joining me today at the NASDAQ Market Site in Times Square is Dr. Issa Odidi. He is the CEO and co-chief scientific officer at Intella Pharmaceutics International. It's so nice to have you with us today. Thank you very much. Now, you co-founded Intella Pharmaceutics back in 1998, and you really focus on researching, developing, and making those targeted release and controlled release drugs. So why that niche? Why did you pick that area? Um, actually, uh, it, in 1995, when uh, we came into Canada for the first time, that's uh, my, myself and Dr. Amin Audidi, who is my spouse and who co-founded this company, uh, we looked at uh, what was happening in the generic space. And we thought that it was crowded by uh, people who were doing the so-called immediate release. That was easy to do. And so we were trying to define a new niche where we could be competitive for BioVail. And uh, as a result of which, we introduced uh, work in this particular area, going after very difficult to make products. And these products have a technological barrier to entry, so there are not many competitors playing in this field. That was the reason why we chose the field. Talk a little bit about the hypermatrix technology, which allows you to work on these targeted release drugs. How is that as a drug delivery platform? Uh, basically, this, this is a new concept, which is uh, not, it's not been the approach by most drug delivery companies. It's a concept that is based on uh, delivering drugs on what we call hyperdimensionality. Uh, try not to go too detailed here, but Basically, uh, drug delivery systems work around matrices, which are seen as three-dimensional entities. But with regards to hypermetrics, we've introduced a, a fourth and a fifth dimension. This is space and time. And after all, we're in the time release business, so we should be looking at what, how, to, how to control time. Okay. Now, Intel Pharmaceutics uh, makes improved replacement products. So you're doing a number of different things. You're, you're working with the pharmaceutical companies that made the original product, and you're also going ahead and looking at, at patents that are about to expire. That is true. So uh, basically, uh, our business uh, strategy is to uh, make uh, you know, very uh, nice copies, what I call super generics, of products that, whose patents are about to expire. That's the control release products. Uh, but more importantly, I think we see ourselves as a technology company that is leveraging our drug delivery systems to try and do two things. One is to look at unmet needs in certain therapeutic areas, for example, in the area of uh, use of narcotics uh, for analgesia. In this area, narcotics are prone to abuse. So we, we, we tend to look at this kind of thing and see what kind of solutions we can bring to the marketplace. We also look at products that are taken many times a day whose patents are about to expire and help companies uh, manage the life cycle of these products by introducing a new and improved uh, delivery system uh, to an old product that is acceptable. You mentioned the narcotics. Let's touch a little bit on Resista, which is an abuse deterrent product. Um, talk a little bit about how that works and, and uh, who are the people who will be using that sort of drug. In fact, this, this particular program is, is one area where we as drug delivery uh, experts and as entrepreneurs feel very proud. Because on the one hand, we're not just looking at uh, making a profit center, but we're also looking at helping solve social problems. Uh, the issue of uh, abuse of narcotic analgesics uh, is, is quite serious. Uh, it impacts severely on the economy of a nation. Uh, it impacts severely on the, on the psyche and the relationships uh, between the, 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 use, the abuser and, and, and his relations or her relations. And, and sometimes people do not go to work. In certain cases, actually, people uh, really have serious problems like, like dying from taking these products with alcohol. So what we've done is, is come up with a, a delivery system, uh, which is basically a paste in a capsule, quite novel, uh, that if you take the paste in a capsule, you can't crush it, you can't sniff it, you can't dissolve in, in liquid and shoot into your veins. And, and also, if you take uh, this, this uh, product with alcohol, you have no problem. Uh, so it's, it's quite a unique uh, improvement, and we feel really proud that we're working in this area. Okay, and, and touching on the FDA just accepted uh, for filing an abbreviated new drug application from your company for a generic version of Protonix. Talk a little bit about Protonix and what you expect to see in terms of sales if, if everything does go through. Okay. Protonix uh, leverages on one of our technologies, uh, which, is, which is based on what we call the Intellimetrics. Uh, basically, Protonix is made up of, a, of a, a drug product that is acid labile meaning that this, this product can be destroyed by acid in the stomach. So typically you want to give this drug such that it goes past the stomach and it's not destroyed and it releases just immediately past the stomach. So it's a quite uh, intelligent uh, technology that is used there. This product is used for, uh, uh, for, for stomach ulcers, so to speak, or pain, or you have heart bumps and, and what have you. Uh, it's a very nice uh, little niche for us and uh, we will feel very proud uh, doing this particular product. 
And what are some of the other uh, generic versions you have under review? With you know, our, our concept basically is to do a basket of products so that we can position our company about very well with regards to uh, licensees. Um, so we're looking at 15 products. Right now we have four products with the FDA. We have Focalin XR, mm -hmm. which is uh, used for attention uh, deficit hypersensitivity disorder. Uh, again, that's a very uh, nice one for us, um, um, and it's very near term, uh, so to speak. We also have uh, Effects XR, which is uh, used as an antidepressant. And uh, we have, like I said, we have several orders in our pipeline, uh, some for uh, hypertension, some for diabetes, and uh, generally in the CNS uh, space as well, so the central nervous system. So it sounds as though you're trying to hit a number of different markets instead of focusing on one Absolute, particular area. Absolutely. I mean, for this company, I think the strategy is to have many shots at goal. So it's not a one-trick one pony. Okay. Uh, Intel Pharmaceutics develops the products in the pipeline, and then that's where things get handed off a little bit. So you, you work to an advanced stage, and then you seek out the distribution partners. That, that's true. Uh, we, we don't intend uh, to fall in the trap of trying to set up a, a, you know, a distribution channel or have a sales force. Uh, that's typically done once you, you, you've, you've cornered a niche and you have several products in your, in your pipeline or in your basket, so to speak, approved. Uh, so what, we, what we'll be doing, we'll be leveraging on, 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 on uh, you know, companies that have uh, distribution channels already established. And, and we've done this very well. Mm -hmm. If you look at our relationships with, uh, with, with Par Pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. one of the, uh, the companies, uh, a public company trading in the United States here, doing over about a billion dollar sales, uh, we, we have uh, gone into partnership with them for Focal in XR. They have a quite uh, you know, deep uh, distribution channels, and we feel that they can do the work. So that's the model going forward. And that company focuses on generic? Oh, uh, uh, generics as well as uh, uh, you know, novel dosage forms as well. Okay. What would you say are your biggest challenges right now? Well, I guess for a company like ours, it's, 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 it's growing up, uh, you know, trying to manage change because things are happening rather fast. I mean, good things, uh, so we're, we're really proud about that. But if you have to manage change, you just have uh, little resources to, to use. There's so much uh, work to be done out there. And, um, you know, trying to get things out there. But we've done it before, so we think uh, we're on the right path. And it's tough being a CEO because you have a lot more to juggle these days. That is true, especially being a CEO in an entrepreneurial company. And we don't have the luxury of having this big uh, behemoth of a company with uh, uh, over a thousand staff doing all the work. So, it, it, but it's quite exciting. Now, how have you taken some of your experience in academia to the CEO role, and how has it helped? Yeah, that's that's a very good question. Uh, on two on two uh, two perspectives. First, on the sciences. Uh, one of the pride of our company is that we're not just uh, out there, you know, quick, following, using a quick cutter approach and just making widgets. We are renowned scientists uh, in our field, but we are scientists that have a business mind as well. Um, uh, I did attend the Rotman uh, School of Management, uh, one of the top uh, business schools in Canada, and uh, had, I've had a lot of experience uh, working in what I call BioVale University. BioVale was a, as a public company has been bought over recently. Uh, where we first caught our teeth and uh, uh, did a lot of successful things there. So uh, the, 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 uh, as an academic, one would be able to bring to bear the tools of academia to try and leverage on those and actually reduce ideas and inventions to practice and bring things to the market. Okay. Now looking at the, the latest earnings, um, an increase in uh, quarter over quarter loss, mainly due to, uh, to R&D expenses. Why did you appreciate those costs at that time? Um, again, I, th I think for a company like this, uh, at its infancy, so to speak, and uh, uh, these sort of companies are, are, are known to burn money. But I think what's important is not the burn of the money or the, or the, the loss that one is reporting, but to see the, the flip side of the loss. What are you getting out of this loss that you are accumulating, so to speak, over time? And is there a horizon, uh, an event horizon, where these losses will become uh, profits? I think the, the big answer is yes for Intelli Pharmaceuticals, proudly so, in the sense that we have four products with the FDA. Uh, we, we think this will reach them. these products will have a good chance of reaching the market uh, sometime in the second half of 2012. And for a company that is, uh, whose uh, you know, um, um, shares are standing are very limited, uh, just imagine doing sales of uh, 100 or 200 million around about that period, that is going to be a great return for investors. Okay. Now, when we're sitting here five years from now, what does Intellipharmaceuticals look like at that point? Um, I, 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 I want to say that I, I, I want to say a company that is perhaps close to a 500 to a billion dollar 
uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of valuation. That's what I want to see. I want to see Intellipharmaceutics, uh, you know, uh, doing the sort of thing we're doing with Resistor, not just, you know, uh, contributing to the bottom line for the company and for shareholders, but also, you know, uh, making a difference uh, for society, trying to produce, uh, you know, products that will uh, increase the lifestyle of people and make people happy. It's a great note to end on. Thank you very much. End it right there. Thank you so much. And that is Dr. Issa Odidi. He is CEO and co-chief scientific officer at Intellipharmaceutics International. Thanks so much for joining us today. Have a great day.